Hello, Blaine of our Agus Fajamwa or of Gutri Shasket in program at BBC Alba had all good Kriya Skilach and Borinit Ingentach and in sales for Sahalaba. As Mishai on a Valentine, Agus Hami College Rida, Skival Morin McGonagall, a rash caller made a program in Och, Yach Jaki, Agus Ard Ochker, Boronoch Albanach and a Sports. At a program in Och, Kunishin Vokush Ganyon, a Vunik Ekna Dushin, Boronoch Albanach and a Sports. A mask che a sluya erintel, che a runic found or ekngemkin of Olahish, agis kuchigan, and I'm sad of her sir polo. Morning, it's great to have you back with us on 360, albeit slightly different this time. Yes, a big bit different, but uh, it's wonderful that the programme's still going ahead. Absolutely, especially in these times. I mean, everyone's just adapting, and you yourself. With Scottish Women in Sport, you adapted very recently um, with your Scottish Women in Sport Awards. Can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> Do you see me shaking my head? I'm hoping it's the first and the last time. Um, yeah, we went virtual. It was actually very good. I enjoyed it. Um, but it's a lot different type of planning. But we had great support. Graphics were good. Feedback's been amazing. So, yeah, all in all, I think it was a, a worthwhile exercise. And if it lifted people's spirits, so be it. How was it for you on the night then when you were doing it? Well, a little secret, you know, 10 minutes beforehand, I got dressed, shoved on a top, sat in front of a screen. <laughs> so it was so much more different than other years where you're normally at the venue, you're checking everything's right, you're meeting people, you're greeting people. Um, but I do think that there's no doubt I prefer to be in front and frightened out of my life speaking to a live audience than I do speaking down to a computer. It, it was such a fantastic event the morning and you had some great guests on the, sh on the um, event too, didn't you? Yeah, I think it was great to mix it up a bit and, and that's what we always try to do. Um, I think obviously, and perhaps we'll go into it later, Iona, but the highlight was the, the interview with Catherine Switzer. What an amazing woman and what a great interview to get. But our own Sue Robertson, who is leading the way in women in sport, again was a wonderful interview as were all the people who actually got the awards on the night. Well, you did mention on the night that you had, you were inundated with nominations. I mean, did you hear lots of inspiring stories through that way? It was so difficult. It was really so difficult. You know, you, you have to look at the criteria and make sure it fits exactly because every single one of them had a great story, which is a wonderful thing about women in sport. Everyone's got a good story. So it was difficult on the night, but it's lovely to have that kind of problem. We know people are wanting to highlight and celebrate women in sport. Well, they certainly do. We will be looking more at these people shortly. That's good. I'm looking forward to it. Bunik Louise Renix Bounor and in Judo Ekna Yamakin, a whole lahish dagalaba arash and a dabu a siki her jig, and an inla dine impure in in Ruth. An ish high coach of Nahokri some sports, Agasana Blaine and Magirik, had a huda pandemic stat and a classican of the Siri. A shewi ye jiffer sports in the Yakanga Kushok, Kanya Moran Tolakus Mungurt in the Heat Kaina, a high Louise Renix in Judo. At school, I took part in probably every single day I was involved in an after-school club that was taken with um, teachers, and that was all sports. It wasn't you just do that sport for the full year. It was netball, it was hockey, it was football, it was mixed with boys and girls. Sometimes it was just all girls. So that's the way I, I kind of remember from early primary school, probably near the back end of primary school, so maybe between primary five, primary seven, I got introduced to judo because my, my dad, my dad done karate and he did judo, and we went along in the judo and I absolutely hated it. Like, I was on the mat, got this judo suit put on me, my mum hadn't put a t-shirt on underneath, so I had this little vest on, a boy takes a grip of me, pulls open my top and I just thought I had been exposed. So I was like crying. My dad was trying to calm me down, told my dad I wasn't going back. And then six weeks later, I remember my little brother, who's a year younger than me, coming home and he just had this new judo belt and he had this big trophy. And I was just like, Dad, I'm going back. And my dad was like, that's fine, that's no problem. So him and my mum took me back on the, the Friday night at the club at the time capsule. And then I just remember before, when we were in the car, my dad saying, Louise, you have to stay for six weeks. You're going to go for six weeks, he says. If you're crying, if you don't like it, you're going for six weeks, he says, because it takes time in a new environment to get to 
to know people, to learn people. He says, because it can be quite scary. And I said, OK. And he says, at the end of the six weeks, if it's not what you want to do, you don't have to do it. He says, but you are going for six weeks. So that happened at the end of the six weeks. He says to me, um, do, you, do you want to keep coming? And I was like, yes, and never looked back. Haloise is breaking a rock of her and a farpushing more and a judo fatadriak. A can wa a vuniki and bell nor the galloper at Nakemik and a colliers and the Glasgow, Lan Heinekenigi. Fuse of his shul ran our pushain. My partner just uh, flagged the nearest uh, hackney and we jumped in. And then I says to the hackney, Can you drop me off at the clock? And he's like, Oh, it's all, it's all shut off there. Nobody can get in. It's only special people that are getting in there. And I'm in all the Team Scotland um, clothes because that's what we had to wear. And um, I was like, Oh, that, that's okay. I'll, I'll manage to get in. Taxi driver's oblivious. The radio comes on and going, Oh, in just over an hour's time, will the Rennick sisters be able to get. Um, both of them be able to get gold. And the man's like, oh, these are two local girls. These are going, so taxi drives oblivious. I'm in the back of his taxi. And then the next thing I just see this look, and then he looks down and he says, are you part of Team Scotland? And I was like, yes. And then my partner, look at my partner, he's just got the biggest smile on his face. And then I was about to get out of the taxi and I says, well, I'm, I'm one of these sisters that the radio there. And he's like, oh, Matt, he's like, you're not paying for your taxi. He's like, good luck, hen, good luck. Now the van Sapach Ulu, but earn father king us cuen a hulurru dela de Louise. Actually, it was this little, this little bird in my head that just turned round and went like that. You've got family and people who have truly supported you. Just suck it in and enjoy this, enjoy this moment, and just like, just love it. I remember bowing to the coach to be respectful and say thank you. And then I just remember raising my hands, and I raised my hands for for the people that were there for me. I ra that's what the raising of my hands was for. And it was just to say, like, take this in, just enjoy this moment and let's celebrate it all together. Halloween's a Christian Gamor and the Vitaos Rutik and the Dash to Spars, as the Tosh Tait the Wun and Kyersnock, and the Skavili the Driach, a Lika Shechat. Had a doers for Buddenich Alapanok and the Spars, Mar Hanachog, it's my herbanaike. I want it for basically my communication to my, like, my clubs and working with the like the different areas that I do work in. So what I would do is on a weekly basis, I would send out um, emails to parents and then I would send out Zoom codes for um, the, all my club members. Where they'd come in, we would do more like a fun group because you'd five-year-olds to 16-year-olds. So trying to specialise that would have been very difficult. Um, you just had to make it fun across the board and, and touching on all the fundamental um, coaching points for the kids. And it was just 30 minutes long. And then as the... Um, the COVID-19 started to become a little bit longer. I then started to identify like competition kids. And what happened was I applied to the lottery and some different people for grants. So I managed to buy some training bands for the kids. I managed to buy some dummies for the, the kids, which is dummies are throwing items that they can use because you can't exactly be asking them to be throwing their brothers and sisters or their parents around in the house. Somebody could get injured. So um, we... Um, handed them out to just a small number of children and then I would do a session with them on a, on a Thursday evening. And then what I would do is that once a month on a Saturday morning we would put a, a family day together and sometimes I would have a footballer come in and take a session, I'd have a dancer, I would have them stretching. And then the best one that stands out for me was we did an, an art cl class. And in that art class what happened was um, people had to get like wallpaper, big strands of... Um, paper sellotape it all together and each person had to lie down in the family and you had to draw around them and make a shape and then at the end of it you had to colour them in. Some of the artwork that was produced um, at the end of the day from this and the photos of the parents is something that I'm very like, proud of. As times went on I've been involved in like local community coaching groups, some to judo and then some to just the community. To, some people are really stuck for ideas or this, this pandemic's caused them just to become quite down and just like they maybe have just had a wee bit of a they're just frozen and what, what they can do and what they can't do everything's a bit confusing for them so in my my community club that I, that I do do in Coat Bridge in North Lanarkshire that is something I do for the community that's a, a volunteer thing it's run by myself my dad and um, my sister and we just want to give back so there's there's no income for us and any income that we do make from the, the club money it goes all back into the children to help in whatever way that we can so it is a lot of um, prep work behind the scenes that I, that I have to do with my planning and my preparation but 
I love to reward them for all. Maureen, the work that Louise has been doing has just been so important to keep people going, hasn't it? It's amazing, as I say, the communication. That's why she got the the Excellence in Communication Award. Um, it just shown through that it was something that she wanted to do, which I think is wonderful. But the difference it made when you see all the pictures of the, the, the young kids that are supporting it, it's just amazing. It's lovely to see. I've actually seen it develop over the course um, of the kind of the start of the pandemic, she was saying on the night she started with one Zoom session a week and then moved on to a couple more a week. And then, like she was saying in the feature there, adding in football, dance and art. I mean, it's really quite amazing what she brought in and just to keep everyone going. I think she actually cracked it on the head because you have to you have to add on the different things to keep their attention. It's different for them. You know, the, the, the kids have had a hard time, as we all have during the pandemic, but they don't understand it just as much as we do. So bringing that fun element in, changing it up, it was just the best thing she could have done. And especially I noticed on the evening of the awards, um, Louise had said, thinking about the bigger picture as well. I mean, for kids who might not have access to do kind of Zoom calls and to do these classes, she was posting books out to them. Yeah, it was a big undertaking from her. As I say, that's why she came out on top. Um, because again, as she said, she did this without any financial reward, any financial gain. She was just happy to give back. And that goes back to what was saying, Iona, that everyone's got a great story to tell and, and a few goosebumps there myself listening to it. I also enjoyed the other thing she was saying about how adapting, like every person and especially everyone involved in sport has been doing adapting the sport to to fit in with the world right now and like she was saying not having a partner there so actually adding in all these extras that you can use instead I thought that was fascinating especially seeing the picture of the wee one sitting there with the dummy um I think we've all have we've all had to be innovative more so yourselves today um but it just shows you what we can do when we're back at against the wall the other thing that's important which Louise had mentioned on the evening again um, was that the feedback from parents had been really good and they've mentioned especially about mental health and how her classes had a positive impact on that. I mean that's another really important thing which is, we kind of need to keep on top of throughout this time don't we? I think it's something that we've all become aware of it and you know the supposed benefit coming out of this is that we're all talking about it so you know hopefully that will continue but we do understand that you know you've got physical health and you've got mental health and there's times you can feel well or not and either of them and we've got to be able to support people when they go through that particular um, time in their lives and I think um, given what Louise did probably helped prevent a few um, issues happening and I think it was wonderful. Wonderful and, and so important but just before then you did also mention about some of the other stories and getting goosebumps from them. Can you tell us a bit about them? We actually had the story of a young six-year-old girl who uh, I believe had um, she had no arms and legs and um, she was just amazing and she was so inspirational but she just as I said to you before she just didn't fit the category and because we had so many we had to be really tough because I had people phoning me up saying, we've got to do something here, we've got to do something there. I said, well, you know, you really need to put your emotions aside, look at it clinically. Does it fit A, B, C, D? And that's where we went. So we had, because um, you, you've got me sort of struggling now trying to think. I've, I've had just <laughs> year, another lockdown. My brain has gone a bit too much, but I can assure you that um, if you're ever at a, a loose end to interview somebody, I can give you tons. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. Well, very inspiring stories, but also a very worthy winner in Louise. Yes. Ag am mar sio hae sganil gafael an opar cruaf an a dain i hae gofar sair holoch sa chorch an ochr fain an i cawg. Ha Megan Glancy, che hae gofar gwe cruaf coloration program ag active schools sym sir a glan a cajes ar holoch sa chorch do clan tros bors harais ar an alm bwyllig a sio. Hoes i'ch Megan Glancy opar sir holoch a sio i ar a chach lindion fo active schools. It all started when I was in the um, sixth year at Holy Cross High School, um, Active Schools Coordinator. Uh, can I came in, spoke to us about Active Schools and all the volunteering work um, in our sports leaders class. So I kind of started building up a wee bit of coaching kind of background there uh, within the school, doing lunchtime clubs and stuff um, as part of that sports leaders course. And then I began to kind of start doing stuff with Active Schools um, through um, active Schools Coordinator Laura at the time when I was in sixth year, so that would be five years ago now. Um, and I've just never said no to an opportunity since. 
Ha han öppnat en tokal där vägen för att vilja hänga den ärtesäkningliga clown och ha hans nu program spår show. Oh, that's great. That's probably the best part about the job. Um, probably the best part. Like, it's just it's a look on the kids' face so or the sense of achievement when they run to their mum and dad at the end of the session and go, "Mum, I got the ball and hoop." Like, it's just you just you just see how much confidence and how much you really see kids coming out of their shell whenever they start to achieve things. And even if it is baby steps, like they managed to hit the net one week and then the following maybe two or three weeks later they managed to get in the basket or it's like scoring goals in football like maybe they've missed quite a few shots and they get one in and they're so excited that they've got that one in um, it's just it's, it's honestly it's such a good feeling um, it really really is and that's probably the best part of it as well for me Ha megar marfars de vinen ha tars teich to go in the high kri on the spars ag sa hai tars imruk it ko kutermak sa hai no go in ach gachlinjen we're, we're the generation that's kind of coming through just now, um, and people that have been in, in the um, in the game for for many years maybe don't see the way see the world the sport world in the way that we see it coming through. We might see kind of different things um, in terms of different opportunities that maybe should be available or different groups that maybe should be targeted. We see that probably a bit more because we're going to school, we're going to college, uni. Um, we've got kind of younger brothers and sisters or cousins or whatever that are kind of coming through and we see what they need and what they would like um, from from sport. Um, whereas I think kind of maybe kind of older people, mums, dads, grands, grandpas that are still in, still in the sporting world, they're kind of mind is set and they know what happened maybe 10, 20 years ago, but they don't know what's happening now. Um, so I think it's really, really important uh, for young people's voices to be heard. Um, and I think young people come up with fresh ideas all the time as well um, about kind of different things that, that should be happening. Um, within kind of local areas and across Scotland. I think sport and music are the two things that anybody can have a conversation about that make the world go round. So I think even if it is a walk round about with the dog, like round about your area where you live or having a chat with your friends, go a walk with a coffee or whatever, like anybody can keep active, anybody can do it. Um, it doesn't matter your ability um, or anything like that. It doesn't doesn't matter who you are. Everybody can keep active in some way, and I think it's really really important that kind of programs and all that are kept going um, for people' mental health, physical health, just overall well-being, um, and to keep everybody connected and, st- and stay together as well. Maureen, Megan is another one who's dedicated so much of her time to sport and volunteering and you can actually see how much it means to her. She's such a passionate young individual um, and it's, it's amazing to see her. In fact, I actually met up with her um, prior to that. I didn't realise who she was. So coming back from the Solheim Cup um, with Shelley Kerr, who was national coach at that point, um, the only two seats we could get were across from two young girls and uh, this young girl's face was a picture uh, when she realised Shelly Kerr was there and she spoke non-stop about how, you know, different people had been role models to her. And when the personality came for the dress rehearsal the night, I thought, I- I've seen you before, I know you. So it ended up it was Megan, so it was quite amazing. But um, yes, she's just in there, she's doing everything um, and she obviously loves what she's doing. And I think that's the whole thing about role models. People don't realise that they have that ability um, to be role models. I mean, we always years ago thought role models were your high profile people, but now we're looking more to aunts, nieces, you know, anyone who goes out and, and encourage other people to get fit and healthy. So, you know, anyone can be a role model, but Megan makes a very good one. She definitely yeah. does. And how important is it to have somebody like her involved in women's sport? Well, the thing is perfect. I mean, it was interesting when she was talking about the different generations. And I don't think I'd be so hard on the older generation because I happen to be one of them myself, Iona. <laughs> um, but I do understand that, you know, there are differences and it's nice to see young people coming through. Um, I, I do work with Scottish Sports Futures and we have a young persons panel there and it's imperative that we understand from them what we need to do and I think that's what Megan was saying, they can bring that understanding of what's current to, to, to us and we can help mould and shape for the future. Well having that understanding of the younger generation, do you think just now we should be worried about losing kind of a whole host of kids from sport during this pandemic? 
I mean, I think there is a concern there and there's always been a concern in terms of the numbers of young women playing sport. I don't think it will be lost. I think it might take a time to build up. Um, but we spoke previously about being innovative and I know that sports um, will be innovative to get people back. So let's keep our fingers crossed, but I'm sure we will get there. Absolutely. And I guess with having these awards, I mean, how important is it to keep these going and hearing these stories from people like Megan? We thought it was really important. You know, we're up against, um, on, on the whole, you know, other sports organisations or other sports awards, they're predominantly male. We need to have the ability to showcase what women are doing, or who's supporting the women to do what they, they do. Um, and I think they're very important. Like Megan said, sport and music make the world go round. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so easy to make friends. It breaks down barriers and brings people together. So that's what we're needing, uh, particularly at this time. So I can't see it being lost, but I can see, you know, there's a, maybe a lack of confidence um, as we go forward, as we come out of the pandemic, but I'm sure that sports have got their way detailed through, perhaps some, I won't say that, but uh, yeah, I think sports know where they're going. Maybe not everyone does, but I think sports do. Hampis Miguelig, I can Hago. Che of Luna can do a Sprachnachel, a Kadushin, Voronoch, Albanoch, and a Sports. A Ganjan Imadach Enya Sharps until Ein and Reish Rayak Ire Ya, a Kaylee Strigus Column Sports, a horse to Hulid Enya. The Janians go Kaylee Hago is the be fooling the Serbo Palsy Fata Bear. Category start is in Chea Earn Blinda Fichet is Servus Iantor, Einson Spores. I started race running when I was 11 years old. Um, and my mum took me to come and try day. And I got on a race runner and basically didn't want to get back off. Um, it just gave me the freedom to run independently without having to worry about falling over. And I never experienced that feeling before which was amazing. Um, I competed competitively for four years in race running before moving across to swimming. And then when race running was announced as a World Paralympic sport, I then moved back to race running um, where I'm competing and training now um, for Great Britain. Hakeli Mochal is not born to have the aim for sports, and has come to have a tight heart to you until the Czech player is going to I think for me, when I was younger, I didn't get much physical education at school. Um, I was always set on the side to do, be a referee or um, be a stopwatch for whatever they were doing. Um, so for me, when I went to these come and try events, it was only really the sport that I ever did. Um, and I basically fell in love with how it made me feel, um, physically and mentally. Um, Physically, it was just beneficial for my legs and my, my cerebral palsy. Um, and mentally and socially as well, and meeting new people and getting to know people who maybe have similar disability to me. Um, because when I was younger, I never knew anyone that, that had the disability. Um, so for me, it was really good if I was having a bad day that I was able to chat to someone um, and they were able to understand what I was going through. A show we get in Tachertus on the Lunar Necking on the Davi de Sagagiak, Vakeli at the Bjorglacher, because Parshagal on the Paralympics, Kelna Yako Larcher, good the Kudishakat Unia on the Tachertus and Snav, was the Helia Dash, good race Rui. So for me, um, when I started racing, I think first my goal was to go to Paralympic Games, um, and unfortunately at the time, race running wasn't going to be a Paralympic event, so I kind of had to, I had to have a chat with my coach and my family and I had this goal in mind, um, but how was I going to get there? And for me, race running wasn't going to get me there. So that's why I decided to move to swimming um, and I trained really hard. I trained eight, nine times in the pool um, a week and I was really, really going for it because I wanted, I wanted to achieve my goal. Um, and when race running was announced, to be a World Paralympics event, that just opened my eyes and I was like, well, I could go back to the race and I can be good at it and hopefully go to Paralympics. 
Yeah. Go. I love training. Um, I don't need to eat something that. Oh no, I need to go to train. I need to this. Um, I love going and enjoy going and enjoy pushing myself really hard. Um, to the point where I want to do more and I want to be faster and I want to be stronger. So for me, training is it's basically my life now, apart from work and everything else that goes on, but training is my focus and I'm training to be faster for hopefully the next next year. Mara Hakad, Hakeli at an Unia Asher and an Hurling, on some race Kate Meter, Dachet Meter, Kate Kate Meter, Agus Och Kate Meter, with the Kanai Gama Mochomi Gain Gajakov. It's amazing, and since I was young, I always broke the world record for my classification. Um, and now that it's a world of athletics, a sport, it's even bigger achievement to continue to break the record. Um, I broke the 200 metre world record this summer um, during lockdown, which I really wasn't expecting. Um, I lost it a couple of years ago to a girl in England, one of my competitor, competitors, um, so to get it back, was just, I was really happy with that. And I, it wasn't something I was aiming towards. Um, my 200 metres isn't, isn't my destined to such. Um, it's more than 100, but we decided to go for the 200 and see how it went. And I broke the world record. So it was quite a shock, but a good shock. Hakeli and Dawkins could be a race from Rui Jerovchen Mark Takatis, like the Paralympics and the Paris and the Davi Lissakea Richard. A few views partial, and got rid of sorry to you. I think for me, it would be surreal to be there and it would just be an amazing achievement. Um, just to be on the start line, it doesn't matter what, what the result is or how the race goes, it's, to be on that start line would just be amazing. But if you see on the Shirakara Chase, Hakeli is on the program of the Gunnilla Curum, and on the Spars, Kochuk, and the program of Lesachuk, and the Sculpture, and the Club of Kajersnach. The project has been running for a couple of years now. It started in Garvin um, for a year and a bit. Um, so in Garvin we have multi-sports club, we have football club, we have now a race running club which, which I help to coach. Um, and it just ensures that people with a disability have that opportunity to take part because for me, I want to inspire people to do what to do what I do and the, see the benefits of it as well. So now that the projects out there are wide, I can now impact hopefully more people's lives and now that I can develop the project across a wider area. I'm mostly going to schools to, to support physical education teachers who maybe have someone in their class who's got a disability or different sport need and they are unsure of how to include them within within their session. Um, so from from going in say it's a couple of weeks and then months later seeing them being fully included within the PE sessions and also within after school clubs as well. I think it just makes it worthwhile and it makes my job I just love my job and I wouldn't I wouldn't do it if I didn't um, but inspiring others to take part in sport, even if it's coming to the Inspire Club, which are for, specifically for those with disabilities, or if it's going to a mainstream club with their friends, where they're able to go and able to feel comfortable taking part, um, that's all it matters, um, getting as many people involved in sport as, as we possibly can. Maureen, Kaylee is another one. You can just tell how much sport means to her, can't you? Well, I think listening to her, everyone could quite clearly understand why she is our inspiration and sport winner, um, inspiring what she does for her job, for herself. Um, and obviously she does it because she loves it. Um, and that comes across again, doesn't it? And she's a record breaker. She's certainly a woman who means business. Wow. I mean, when you read what she's achieved... I mean, it's crazy that we don't really get to hear about this type of success. And I think, again, as I said, that's one of the reasons that we have our awards, so we can highlight them. Can't highlight everyone, but it's great just to show a little, a little piece of what's out there.
And like Hayley said in the feature there, I mean, as a, as a coach, she wants to show other people with disabilities that they can do this too. I think that's so important. And, you know, for, for Kaylee to be able to do that through her work and through what she does and um, through her achievements, um, it's going to help so many others uh, who maybe don't think that they fit into this particular world. Um, and there is no doubt that they definitely do. You must have seen some really inspiring stories in this category. Yes, I love it. I mean, last year we had Keris McCrindle, strangely enough, from Down Ayrshire Way as well. And Keris is a Down, sw uh, Down Syndrome swimmer, again, breaking records left, right and centre. We had a young lady called Becca Seller prior to that. And Becca has been capped for playing football for Scotland. She's a below the knee amputee. And the Scottish Paralympic um, team that she played in was mixed. So not only is she... Um, been capped, but she's probably the first woman to play in a mixed team and, and be capped for it. So there's amazing stories. I think that was our seventh year. So, you know, I'm just sitting thinking, what kind of year are we going to have when it's a 10 year anniversary? It's going to be amazing. Oh, it will be amazing for sure. But you did have a really great um, guest speaker on, on the um, event this year, didn't you, in Catherine Switzer? Yeah, I mean, everything just fitted in nicely. And uh, I mean, the, the the amount of people who loved listening to Kaylee was amazing, but so many people could resonate, perhaps more my age group, with um, what Catherine Switzer has done. And again, she was so engaging because it can be quite boring sitting for an hour and a half, two hours, staring at a scene, but she brought it to life. And I mean, her story about being the first woman to run the Boston Marathon and being taken off the race physically by a man became all the more um, relevant to Scottish sport when we found out that that man Jock Semple came from Glasgow but I mean that interview along with our awards is um, on our YouTube channel so if, if people did miss it they could catch up on it. Great well the thing is for Scottish women in sport now I mean we don't really know what the year ahead holds for us at the moment but for you what are your hopes for Scottish women in sport? So you want me to delve into my crystal ball and tell you what's going to happen <laughs> here don't you? <laughs> what would you like to happen? Well, we've actually got a few things in the pipeline. Um, we've, we're going to work with Heart Research UK. We have six athletes um, who we've signed up and we're doing interviews with six athletes and they're doing interviews with six um, scientists. And we're going to launch that on International Women's Day of Science and then again an International Women's Day. Um, we're working with Sam H. We're looking at putting together a mentoring programme for young girls, something different that's been offered before. So we're quite a way down the, the, the road in that one, which is very good. We would love to think we're going to have a conference and have people there. We had to cancel it in 2020, but in 2021, well, you know, the sky's the limit, Iona. It certainly is. Well, fingers crossed for all of that and loads more sport too. Thank you. Well, Shanair son program Ayla, Mahang Ford and Maureen are son of each other. Footage of our lentil gach shaki on YouTube, for Shen Jenkins shaki in each shape, give a quarter brave. The mission of our lentil, I guess, the calcio program to be. Can I get a great show on program Akavshe? My Shen skill of an eye fat this farshing, I guess, to move out of a coil. But that can spores for enough to halibut, Martian life and dress.